Everybody get your coughing out now. So we're uh, <laughs> we're we're ready to be home. Yeah, it's been, been a long haul. Uh, we took a stop here. I had to pick up something from James James's hometown, and uh, so we got James Van Geisel. We got Colby. Wait, wait, wait. The Bear Tech. Yeah, that's what Clay calls me. The Bear Tech. Bear yeah. Hunt Magazine. So we just got done. We we did a lynx hunt up in Canada, eh? A. Eh. Uh, so we're going to talk a little bit about our, our hunt. I promised Shannon we would do a podcast. <laughs> You're welcome, Shannon. <laughs> and uh, just the last thing she told Colby when we were leaving the shop was, make sure Buddy does a podcast. <laughs> Down we to the very last minute, we're going to get that done. <laughs> Promise fulfilled. <laughs> Four hours before I get home, we had to stop and just like, oh, we got, I got to do a podcast. So we're going to do a podcast real quick. So let's back up a little bit and uh, we're just going to tell a story. We'll try not to, oh, there's, a, there's a bunch of. Twists and turns. F-ups. <laughs> a lot of F-ups. <laughs> there's a lot of, a lot of things. Just, just getting there was a nightmare in itself. Yeah. Um, Colby, you still feeling okay? Yeah. I'm you want, ready to be home. You want to talk about <laughs> it? Your new bride? Yeah. I'm ready to be home. Yeah. Yeah. So we got to the border. So me and James skate right through. And uh, two of our our party had to get flagged for. Yours what? truly got handed a box and said, swab your nose. <laughs> Random yeah. COVID Random test. COVID test. Course. Yeah. So, so you had to go. So when you go there, they... they there's a chance, I guess, randomly the computer generates and, and picks who's got to take the test again. Because mm-hmm. we had to all take the test within 72 hours. Multiple times. <laughs> For <laughs> you. 72 <laughs> hours in order to get your results back fast enough. How much did you pay, James? Said and done, it was, I, I had to be about $525 into COVID testing. To, and, and the first one, you know, you got 72 hours to get your results back. And uh we were sitting there at dinner already crossed into bc and it was at like hour 76 i finally got the results back from the first test but that's the joys of living in a small town yeah the the night before i had to beg and plead with the local (laughs) hospital up here to they weren't doing tests for travel but i didn't really have any other option and so we all got tested like was it Within 72 hours. It was like Wednesday afternoon. The other thing, if you're going to do a, if we're just going to, if we're going to teach people, don't pick a holiday weekend to travel. To. <laughs> yeah. Like for the 72 hours is on Thanksgiving and Black Friday. So everything was closed for like the testing that I went to wasn't, I went in and I had my test within an hour and a half. Yeah. I wasn't that lucky. 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> James, I, uh, James goes in there well, and, and I was wanting you to get, I was wanting James to get picked so bad. <laughs> I was just wanted to see what your response was going to be. <laughs> and so I go in the night before and pay him and do a second one. And we're sitting here the next morning the day. Well, no, you, you, they wouldn't even, they, their printer went down. Oh well, yeah. That was, that was the next morning. Oh, okay. So yeah, the next morning their printer wasn't working and we're set to leave and everyone's kind of waiting on me and I still don't have a test to get across the border. And so finally like 845 in the morning, they got their printer figured out and uh i was able to get my results but yeah it was a it was a train wreck you bought me and colby some time to catch you we we yeah. come from our side of the state all the way over here and we we met you damn near at the border yeah you made the caravan happen <laughs> yeah so we, we hooked up because of your your delay in testing you had to hang around here till nine before you could leave yeah i wouldn't suggest having to go do that again <clears throat> and so you get to the border you know the the biggest thing is is they hand these random tests and they're like, Colby, you're selected for a random test. Mm-hmm. I was so excited about they, it. <laughs> they hand you a box and, <laughs> and so they, uh, we go there, we're, we're at this hotel and we're on the phone and I don't know that the guy, other way it goes is we haven't talked to him. So I don't know. We're not gonna use his name cause I don't know if he wants to be on here or not. But anyways, there was two of us in a party and Colby was one of them. So we'll make fun of Colby. And, uh, <laughs> So we're sitting in this hotel room trying to figure out, reading how to take this test. You got to call them. You got to FaceTime them. Yeah. And uh, pretty much internet went down. So you got to stick something up your nose. And your cheek and then up your oh, nose. Oh, yeah. Your cheek first and yeah. then your nose. So basically it's like I licked my brain. <laughs> <laughs> and they yeah. took it real serious. Like step yeah. by step, open the envelope, put the sticker on the box, this, yeah. that. And they, he wanted to watch every last step of it. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. So we got that done. And then at the end, he's like, okay, get this to a FedEx place. Well, the first thing I said, go to your quarantine place. So we're mm-hmm. like, we're on the phone with the guy. We're like, you will not, like, FedEx is not going here. <laughs> you know no. what I mean? This is like a remote camp out there. Um, you know, we got internet, but you know, we're telling the guy, we're like, dude, I'm telling you, FedEx is not going to come pick this up. He's like, oh, yes, they will. <laughs> Anywhere in BC. <laughs> so... So for the whole remainder of our hunt, that FedEx package sat on the front porch <laughs> of this place. Never did get, I don't know if I checked it the last day. It was still there. It was still there. Yeah. So. Yeah. I wonder at what, Col- what uh, Colby's temperature gonna... COVID dies. Colby's, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm definitely, it's definitely a COVID free test if it dies at like four degrees. <laughs> <laughs> it's done. That... It's done. <laughs> yeah. Um. So that was the first experience trying to figure out a phone. So we finally get up to camp. I'm going to call this day zero. We yeah, get up there. Day zero. Or I, I called it travel day because there's still a day zero. No, no, that, this is day zero. Oh, okay. So we, we took the test that night. We go to sleep. We wake up in the hotel. We get to we get to camp. Yeah. And we got to go take those dogs out and exercise them. And so me and Colby have this grand idea. It's a fantastic idea. It still so, is. Yeah. So it would have been a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> So Colby has this cool camera. It's what's yeah. that called? It's an Insta three hundred and sixty. So it it when films three hundred and sixty degrees. When did you get it? I got it Wednesday at the house. <laughs> Tuesday or Wednesday? The day before the Thanksgiving. Yeah, right before Thanksgiving. How before long? this trip. <laughs> How many days did it last? <laughs> it, it, it's it's in the small percentage. <laughs> <laughs> three, four. Did it make it to day one? <laughs> you know, it it made a. Uh, Two appearances. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was now, well, instead of a 360 camera, it's a 180 it's camera. It's a 180 camera. So me, me and Colby, we got this idea. I'm like, oh, we're just roading dogs. We're just figuring, we're going to get some B-roll, you know. And yeah. B-roll, if, if you don't know, is just like setup shots, which most of the hunting stuff you see on TV. When when you watch like um, Mountain, Man, Mountain Man Any or something, hunt. I'm always telling mm-hmm. my kids, I'm like, do you notice he's running towards the camera? <laughs> like the cameraman's a badass. He's up in front of the dogs, <laughs> and uh, you know, and so you're watching those things. And if you, it, it ruins you for watching a, a hound show when you. When oh you, yeah, entirely. When you see the guy running off a cliff and and he runs right past the camera, it's like he's in a rush, but the camera guy beat him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And anyway. when they have the camera like on the hitch of the truck, and then it just mysteriously bounces off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Anyways, so we're shooting some of that fake B-roll, and I'm like, you know what would be really cool is to put that camera in the middle of the road, and I'll just road all my dogs by it. Yeah. I expected my dogs to ignore the camera. That was the first mistake. <laughs> they did not all ignore the None camera. And uh, the second mistake was, uh, as Colby defined it, was his lack of communication. <laughs> so I thought it was communicated. <laughs> well, it was, it was like playing that telephone game where... One person tells somebody something, the next person tells somebody something, and we get it. Somehow the message got changed <laughs> yeah. to run over my camera. Yeah, we, <laughs> in, my both defense, tires. <laughs> in my defense, that camera's not very big, but <laughs> it's sitting out in the road, and, and we're roading up through there, and Buddy comes across. I drive across. right over it, right over the top of it, well, cool shot. Before that, yeah. though, he comes across the radio, and he says, Colby's going to try to hide in the brush from these dogs. And so I'm looking no, out. No, I, no, I didn't say it. I said Colby thinks he's going to hide in the brush. Colby thinks he's going to hide from the brush from these dogs. So I'm, <laughs> I'm looking out the left side of my pickup trying to find where Colby's hiding and uh, drive right on through Where's there. Where's Waldo? And uh, we get to the- <laughs> He should have been worried about where the camera was hiding. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't know there was a camera sitting in the middle of the road. That's obvious. And so- yeah, I ended up, uh, I ran it over, not with just one tire, but with two. Yeah, I jumped out and attacked both tires. <laughs> and uh, so we, we You should have seen Colby's right. face, man. <laughs> <laughs> you want to talk about a kid that just got his birthday taken away. I'm and sorry. I was like, well, that's why you don't run around with Houndsman, I guess. It's just going to be, that's a shit show from the beginning. <laughs> I'm impressed with how it head up, held up, though. Like, I got the footage off and. And oh, it still halfway works. It still halfway works. 180. And it, 180. Which yeah. Which is really surprising. Yeah. And the other side, we cleaned out the, all the glass, and it still works, but it's fuzzy because of the lens. Got yeah, it's blurry. Demolished. How close were you to crying, Colby? Oh, no. This stuff happens. <laughs> <laughs> I think in your mind, you were like, this is going to be a little more difficult than I thought. Well, you know, I was like, oh, on this, on this I'm going to have to self-film. This 360 camera, I'll just like hold it out, and then I'll go back later and pick my shots and everything. 
That didn't happen. It <laughs> didn't happen. <laughs> and then you try to you try to overnight one of those to the middle of nowhere in northern BC, and that also doesn't yeah. happen. No, I tried to. I felt bad. We all we all felt bad for Colby. We were calling stores four hours away, trying <laughs> trying to see where we could find one of these cameras. Oh, so that was day zero. Yep, we wrecked the camera. Turns out we didn't need it anyways. Yeah, we it didn't help. We didn't have anything to film. <clears throat> so, oh, we get into day one. What was day one? Oh, that was when we unloaded the snowmobiles. We were like, grand idea. It was all snowing up top. Hard to get, you know, chains. We were like, we'll just put the snowmobiles on. We'll go cut a track. We'll get this done. And we get up there and there's not very much snow. We're dragging carbides and it's... Yeah, Colby's having fun, sleds. man. Colby is oh, like... I'm having a blast this whole time. <laughs> He's like... <laughs> the carbides are scratching the gravel and Colby's <laughs> just like, whoa, whoo. I'm like, <laughs> this is not snowmobiles. <laughs> no, so then we ended up we loaded back up, ran down, checked another road, and had that old track. Yeah, yeah. You turn loose on, on you t- turn two dogs loose turn on that track. Turn two dogs loose on that old track. And and we, made, uh, was that the one where he was like, "If those dogs run this track?" Yeah, he he looked yeah. at it and he's like, "There, there's no dogs that are going to run this track." Yeah, and he was yeah. thinking that it wasn't possible, and I'm like, "Well, we can try." And so put two dogs on it, and they started out slow, but ended up working it out, and Got in there into a bunch of log slash blowdown yeah. stuff. And never got it jumped. Never got it jumped. And then at, at dark or just before dark, we had to pull them off. Um, so that day was the other group did good that day though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they got a seven. What was it? A seventeen pound one. I don't know if it's using their names, but a couple guys from Montana were in the camp with us. Yeah, two brothers. Yeah, they were. They both. They did really tags. well. So they caught one that day. So. That was the one that, and that's the one that they, the road. yeah. Yeah. They come around the corner and the lynx is just standing in the road and, and it stood there long enough for him to get out. And <laughs> when the dogs hit the ground, it was still standing in the road. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> looking at As him. he's looking at the dog box, I'm like, I told, I told Stuart that I said, I want that hunt. Like I want that experience. Could you? 80 yards off the road, treat solid. Yeah. No, 800. Was, was it 850 yard oh. race? He said. Yeah. But I feel like when you see something in the road and you set out on it, you, I was surprised they got it. <laughs> like, Chance, yeah. like it, I would say, ninety percent of the time when you do that, you don't catch whatever yeah. it was that was just standing in the road. That was miraculous. More to often me. than not, yeah, yeah. Day two, so first day, no cat. Like day two, what did we do there? I came. Well, I ran one. Yeah, that was when we. Uh, That's the one that I ran that had wings. Yeah. Eh. So we'll have to go back on that. But well, yeah. the first one we ran was the one that uh. We had to go up on the snow machine where wolves oh, were in the area. Wolves, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wolves. We turned six dogs loose in there, and then there was wolves. Yeah, yeah. this was where I, phew, right about the same area that um, you ran the cold trail, the one. Yeah, the night before. And so we kind of were in the same spot. It it had crossed right there, so we turned loose on it, and uh, dogs did a pretty good job. We had a issue that they did a couple circles, so I think we got it jumped. But um, Stewart came back. He was. He was running a road out, and uh, the wolves had, had gone in that area, and so he went and ran the other side to see if they crossed out. Um, no tracks. And when we come back, we had, had a track started, and he was like, pull them. He said, those wolves are in there really close somewhere. And so we we had, he was on a snowmobile. He had that, my, my old snowmobile. It was not his, but, and uh, we pop on that, me and Colby. Mm-hmm. I'm in, I'm in. I don't even know what you call it when there's three people on a snowmobile. <laughs> You're riding middle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, both front and back I had. We we were a trio. <laughs> and so we're going up there busting brush up this little trail that. It wasn't really hardly a trail. <laughs> asked, it's a trail asked, now. James, <laughs> James, I said, can, can snowmobile make it up that? And he's like, no. <laughs> we made it. <laughs> it, was, it was running shit over. and <laughs> There was a lot of effort involved. And uh, we get up there and. Like the first thing is Colby had gotten a little bit of advice about a snowmobile because he was nervous about him. From a wise, seasoned individual. <laughs> and he, <laughs> what did he tell you? Man, he said, uh, he's like, on a snow machine, it's not like an ATV. If it starts, <laughs> if it starts turning at all, just bail. He's like, these things are heavy. Don't try to stabilize it. Just, just jump. And so I, I can listened, attest that I listened that to the wisdom of my elders. <laughs> Col- Colby bailed, one hundred percent committed. 
I look over, so the snow machine's just tipping a little. It's not even tipping a lot, James. It's just, it's just enough. <laughs> it was a like, lot to me. <laughs> I'm like, we can recover this. You know, we can pull out of this. And Cole's like, I'm out. He flies. He must have jumped 10 feet. <laughs> it sounded like it got stop catapulted. Traveled. Yeah. Almost like it hit a bump and just launched him. I got full horizontal like Jazz getting thrown out of the Fresh Prince of Bel Air house. <laughs> oh. He's like, go on without me. Go on. I'm like, come on, Charlie. Get your shit on the, get on the slide. We always get up to that where the dogs were and we pull them off um, because of the wolves. So mm-hmm. so that was a second race that I kind of think we probably could have caught a cat there. Um, I think we would have definitely caught a cat there if there wasn't wolves. In that. Maybe. Yeah. I mean, depending on how I much it's it, hard to say. <laughs> Yeah, we got a good race that that kind of humbles a guy. So yeah, if it would have turned into one of those, maybe not. I don't know. But um, so second day, and then we get on that medium sized Lynx track. Yeah, so we continue link. on. We pass a track because we're like, oh, we should look for a good one. And then I don't know. Two hours later, we're like, maybe that last one we pass is not looking so bad. And so we go trail on that one and. They did really well on that one, too. No, yeah. they didn't. They, <laughs> well, in the end, they were. <laughs> they switched tracks first. They switched tracks and, and ran up to a an older track. And then they I kicked them back in there, and then they ran on the back track. And then I, we got them back in and found out where it crossed the road and got them on it. And then they ran it like, I was like, I told Colby, I said, get your camera ready. That thing's going to cross right here. Well, it had already crossed at some point right there because yeah. um, I seen the track. But we could not find it off the road. We spent an hour trying to get it off that road. So it was in the tire tracks, and we walked up and down the tire tracks, and that was de- it was gone. Still I, don't know where it went. Well, and it didn't help that we were hunting on ten day old snow. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But that was that was a catch. The way they were running, I don't know. Maybe because they, they were in some open area, they're running really good. And then, and there was one track that I found that might have been it, but it looked it didn't look like the same age track. But in the brush they were running different than they in the open. So it was, I don't, I don't, I still don't know. I'm, I'm making a lot of excuses. The one thing <laughs> I learned is even when you get these links jump, it's not like another cat where, you know, you're running a line or bobcat and you're jumped and you're pretty much sure like, yeah, we're going to catch this thing. Right. It's, yeah. it's a whole different world with those the, links. The jumped. Yeah. I don't even know if that cat was jumped or not, but it's impressive. And so, so that was day two. Yep. And uh then Colby started snowing that night. Oh, about that time I told you. I think I it was I did I tell you on day two? When did I tell yeah. you that Yeah, you're like, Man, we might not get out of here on time. <laughs> <laughs> I come back to camp day two and I'm like, Colby, because he's got this wife. How 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 long you been? Like married? two and a half months. So they're in his honeymoon stage and he's coming with houndsmen, like me and James, and I'm like Colby, here's the deal. I know I told you we're going to be home by this day. But, but it might uh, be Tuesday or Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> it's not looking good for you, Colby. You might yeah. have to find your own ride. I said, I said, because I was planning on getting out of the early Friday. You know what I mean? I was like, okay, we'll hunt Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. We'll hunt the four days. And then Friday morning, we'll go out for a quick hunt and be done. Mm-hmm. And on day two, I'm like, this might be a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> this might be a little more than, than I expected. And, uh. So I gave him a warning. I said, Colby, if I get, we'll move your flight out, but um, I may not be able to make you, get you back in time for your flight. Um, yep. So I was in my mind, I'm thinking, how am I going to, your wife, how'd your wife take it? Oh, I shouldn't have told her. <laughs> <laughs> should have just kept quiet. I should have waited. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she didn't take it very good, did she? She don't like, there's a lot of friends, my friends. Uh-huh. A lot of my friends, their wives do not like me, <laughs> Colby <laughs> <laughs> there's stories about me when it's time to go hunting at the but end. But it all worked out in the end. We it ended did. Up still. <laughs> We're going to get you on your flight. Yeah. Um, day three. Fresh so, snow. So Finally that was, started getting some snow. About the worst time of day you could get snow, but at least we started to get some snow. Snowed all day. Chained up. Chained Colby up was like tires. Col- Colby was kind of excited about tire chains. You know, I thought maybe it'd be cool. <laughs> 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 he wanted to video it. He's like, I could do this on video and just the chains and Yeah, it wasn't it exciting. <laughs> I was I was having to help and so <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm gonna th- well, I had to decide whether to film or help and I decided to help. <laughs> you didn't want to be the, the camera guy that watches No, I can't do that. I would be terrible at like <clears throat> Discovery Channel or all those. Yeah. So we're buying we're we're borrowing chains, we're getting a couple trucks chained up. 
All three trucks chained up. I kind of think we could have made it without chains. It would have been in one of those situations where you, you slide off and you'd be screwed, but with chains it felt good. Um, we didn't cut it. I don't think we cut a single track that no, day. No, we didn't. Cut it's one of those track. days that you go out in the morning. I was talking to Stuart, and I'm like, this is a day you should just stay home. Stay, yeah. I, I told Bruce, I told him the exact same thing when we left that morning and it was yep. snowing. So it was we like, should have stayed in camp. It would be yeah. a lot better to stay here and just hunt tomorrow. <laughs> you wouldn't cause problems, you know, because when you go out when there's no good, there's a risk of causing more problems than, than good. Like there's, there's that small hope of cutting a, a track. And then there's making things worse. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We made things worse. <laughs> we <laughs> we were good at that. So, um, when, when, I guess we should teach some people that people already know, and I got lazy. When you put tire chains on and you clip the inside, you should always zip tie your little tags on those tire chains. Um, I had one tag out there and I, I didn't think nothing of it. And, uh, apparently in the middle of the day, I was turning around on a little logging road way down there in deep snow. And I felt something weird click when I turned, you know, I just felt something. I was, tink. I was like, oh, that was weird. So I'm coming down this hill and I, I pushed the brake and it just right to the floor. <laughs> so I'm coming down this hill and I'm just <laughs> telling Colby and Stewart's with me. And I like, I mean, brakes. <laughs> and I lost my brakes. Tire chains took out my brake line. And, uh, that's always a good feeling. Yeah. Passenger side front took a hit. In the in the middle of the woods, um, in Canada, eh? <laughs> <laughs> so the hunt was uh, you would think would be over, but Buddy hunted all the way out. <laughs> well, we, no, we had to sit there and try and fix it out there. Oh yeah, that was not working out well. <laughs> yeah, you know, everybody's like, "Oh, I should pinch, just flip that brake line over and pinch it." That's easier said than done. Yeah. Um, on the older cars that have just like a regular master cylinder, not like the power boost, <laughs> you know, like the super duty power booster. Um, we, we twisted that brake line, tried to pinch that it That vice off. grip stuck to it. Yeah. Vice grips, pinched it. We, I mean, I bet you we wrapped it five times to the point where we couldn't wrap it anymore and it still squirt, blew it out. Mm -hmm. Um, impressive that I drove from that location to a, a town. town by touching the brakes twice. It <laughs> 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 was one person that may have hit a crosswalk that I'm like, stop sign that I'm like. It was a little close. <laughs> well, I did it. It was with the parking brake. I mean, it was a little bit of redneck. I wasn't <laughs> sure how long I was going to make it, but I I pretty much, me and uh, Stuart did what we could to fix it out there. We couldn't get it pinched off. So we're like, okay, let's get to town. I got Mike on the end reach trying to get the part. They said they could get the part and they could get it fixed that night. We had a shop that would get it fixed that night. And I'm like, oh, awesome. So I'm like, Stuart, let's go into... We'll lift this thing into town, get my truck fixed, and we can be ready. When the snow stops, which would be the day four, I'm like, we'll be ready to hunt. So we split up. And I'm hunting on the way out, like Colby said. Like, I'm still stopping. I'm still dropping dogs <laughs> out. They bark. I'm like, okay, we'll try. <laughs> He's still slipping it in reverse. He's like, wait, did you see that back there? <laughs> you got to like go into neutral first, let it idle, go to a stop, and then hit reverse and back it up. <laughs> you don't have the brakes. It's, it's kind of difficult to ride a, drive a truck without using the brakes. Yeah. Um, we we uh we never cut a track. No, we left the woods kind of early. I mean, it was yeah two in the afternoon. Two. We only had one more snow. hour of yeah. light, though. I mean, yeah. The other group found their track right about that time. About two thirty is when they said they found that track and caught the second cat. Yeah, yeah. and you guys seen a track up there that was that we we come out right after we left on day four. Yeah, we went yeah. back in there and found a track that came out right after we left. So I got the anyways we. We split up. You guys go back to camp. Me and me and Stuart go to town. Thank goodness Stuart's got friends because yeah. I, well, I found a shop that couldn't fix it because apparently it was some poly-coated brake line. And uh, anyways, found a shop that disabled it. They stopped it from <laughs> bleeding. They said it was going to be two weeks for it to get the part. And uh, anyways, I don't want to talk too much about it in case I... <laughs> yeah. Get in trouble on the way home. I still got to get home, but uh, let's just say I got seventy five percent break, and uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm missing twenty five percent. But uh, anyways, and temperatures finally drop. Yeah, so we're we're gonna make it, but I got to get it to my shop, and they'll get it fixed maybe in ten days. Um, but I get it working. I get my brakes. When I push my brakes, it goes doesn't go to the floor anymore. I tried the e brake. Yep, I I was like, I tried everything, man. So my truck's working good. 
we go back Thursday, day four. This is Colby's day. Yeah. That's when the magic happened. Finally. So so this is the day that I'm telling Colby, you know, like the end of day three, I'm like, it's really not gonna happen, Colby. We're not gonna <laughs> get out of here on time. And I'm still bright eyed and optimistic. <laughs> yeah, don't tell your wife, but that was the day I'm like, it's gonna be a bad we're gonna be late. We're not gonna make your flight. Day four comes and uh ten degrees Fahrenheit. It was cold. Colby. <laughs> what was your favorite attire that you wore? Oh man, I don't, my big jacket. Your jacket? <laughs> my, you kept talking about that fur hat. Jacket. Oh, that fur hat saved my bacon. <laughs> yeah. Every day. <laughs> what were you gonna do without it? Freeze my ears off. <laughs> I think <laughs> Colby had I'd be every, hooding up. <laughs> <laughs> every piece of clothing that first light makes colby was wearing it it's yeah all, it's all together at once oh, yeah. for some reason i only packed the medium weight base layers i needed the 350s <laughs> i needed the furnace <laughs> i didn't wear the furnace the first day yeah i only wore it yesterday that would be the last day um yeah i wore the lightweight stuff the first day it was a little cold but we were moving enough good yeah so we're up there and uh we all split up and at this point we were kind of trying to hunt together on the first couple of days, and by this day, it's like we got to split up because we got a couple cat tags to punch and divide and conquer. Yeah, so, so me and Colby, we go one way, a couple guys go the other way, and then uh, James, you go another way. Me and Colby, I'm coming around there, and I just see a track there, and it's like perfect snow. I'm like, oh, finally, finally, this is a good good opportunity. Yeah, we turn loose. And it, well, and the outfitter's on the other side, and he sees a different track. Yeah. He's, and so he's like, rabbit. And then Buddy's like, no, 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 no. That's a link. He's like, rabbit. It's like, no, no, no. And Buddy gets out, and he like, he gets closer, and he's like, that is not a rabbit. And so it turns out there was two different tracks that were kind of lined up on both sides of the truck. Yeah. It was a nice lynx. And uh, so we get out, and I get the collars on, and Colby's got the video camera. He's going to start filming a little bit. and. Uh, Turn them out. Dogs go down there. You're doing your thing. Dogs are heading away. They're kind of cold trailing. They're not moving very fast. You know what I mean? They're just like, just start to sort it out. And I'm like, okay, we got time. Yeah, and I'm keeping up with them, filming them from the road. Yeah, the brush. They're, they're like five, ten yards in the in the yeah. off along you know like the ditch of the road. You know, so they're running behind my truck. It would say south, right? My truck's pointed north. Dogs are heading south along the road, just cold trailing. So. Hopefully that video comes out. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be good. And so it, they're going through there, and I'm like, oh, shit. These things, you know, we got some trailing to do. They're going to at least trail this several hundred yards, you know what I mean? So I tell Stuart, I say, I'm going to go turn my truck around, you know, 100 yards to the turnaround spot, maybe maybe 150, I don't know. So I go down to this turnaround spot. I come back up, and Colby's like, the dog's bark's changed. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, they definitely shifted gears. <laughs> And about that time, I look at the GPS, and it's just like 90 degree lined out, and they're just hauling. I'm like, it was probably shouting 40 BPMs and stuff. Yeah, it was it was going, and uh, I see it make a little tight circle. You know, and it makes one of them, anybody that's running links knows that little little circle. And uh, you know, Stuart's like, oh, we got a lot of time still, and I'm like, I don't think so. <laughs> and about 50 yards later everything just starts tree and perfect and i'm like that's done right there and uh what was it like five minutes <laughs> yeah I, I don't even know if it was that long it was like super it quick was so fast it makes you feel good when it's your dogs <laughs> <laughs> you're like right on and so we go in there and uh and we, at this point colby still hasn't seen a lynx yeah colby <laughs> has given up on seeing a lynx he's trying to figure out how to write a story i was like are, are, are you is this just some big elaborate punk <laughs> Yeah, so are they fooling me? Oh, so we go in there. We, I find a spot where we can walk down this little skid road, and then cut over. It was like a three three hundred yard hike. You know, nothing big. Mm -hmm. And I'm always nervous when I walk into a tree. Like I won't pet my dogs. You know, like no good dog, no nothing, until I see the cat. And so, anyways, I get in there, and there's a cat looking at us. I'm like, thank goodness, thank <laughs> yeah. goodness. And so I'm like, good dogs. And then you yeah. guys come in. Colby gets in there. What was your first thought? Big cat. Is that what they you do exist. That's a big cat. <laughs> In my mind. <laughs> yeah. It was a, it was impressive. I I told Stuart, I said, if, if Colby don't want to shoot that one, I will. I, 
Yeah, that's and, a really nice cat. Yeah, yeah, and then did Stuart tell you if you don't shoot it, I will? <laughs> yeah, he said, well, if you don't decide to shoot that one, then I will. So we had three people behind you, know, two people behind you. They were going to shoot that. Um, it, should we tell them to wait or should we wait? Well, you know, got it, took photos and everything, and then got back to the, I think we need to decide, tell them how we waited because that was, that was pretty funny. Oh, yeah, we'll do that when we got back. Yeah. I didn't believe the wait. I knew he was heavy in my arms. I'm like, you're talking about <laughs> holding him out here this way and that way. I'm like, y'all need to hurry up and take some photos because I'm shaking. <laughs> oh. Uh, so so we get there. Yeah, we take a little bit of pictures of the dogs. You got some pictures of the, in the tree. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we decide this is the one for you. Mm-hmm. Maybe the only one we're going to catch this trip, the way the things are going. And uh, we harvest it. We get out of there. Big old Tom. Yep. We've, we've got a Tom, and uh, so we, we go on to hunt another one. Like, well, we got another, I still got a tag. And so we go on there, and, and then we find two links walking down the road, and we spent the rest of the afternoon trying to catch one of those. I think we there was three or four links there. We were, there was three, there was two, where their tracks were pretty much on top of each other. Yeah. And, uh, and they were going in and out of snow to dry ground. Yeah, they would walk off the road into the side, and we're talking 10 degrees, 12 degrees. My dogs had a hard time on that. I think, yeah, I think that was a pretty big factor on on all of them was just the temperature. Mm -hmm. That cold. I mean, and guys in Canada are like, no, it's warm. (laughs) I don't know what you're talking about. That's cold. That's 10 degrees is way. But But it got colder. Yeah, my my dogs really had a hard time starting the track, and once they, you know, get used to it or something, they do decent. But um. I think it only got up to what seventeen that day, or yeah, twenty one, something really... like that. Yeah, upper and, teens, lower twenties. Yep. And so we got another cat going. Finally, finally found one track after working these two that were on the road. To, it's like the dogs could just smell it enough in the snow, but they'd get out of off the road and into the dry, and they couldn't smell it. And uh, yeah. frustrating when you're looking at a track that you know was made within last night. Yeah. And it's like you should be able to run this and they couldn't run it. It took us forever. And, um, well, you went through the next day. You seen how many boot tracks and dog tracks and yeah, we drove through the next morning and it was just like, what did Mike say? Well, we're crew. So we're driving through there and at first he's kind of pissed. He's like, I can't believe they sent us up this road. How we're we supposed to know what's fresh. And he was getting pretty frustrated. And I, honestly got to the point kind of where i was going through some of that stuff and i wasn't even looking because it was like unless it's on top of these tire tracks yeah it was yesterday and we aren't gonna mess with any of it and he was getting a little frustrated um before we ended up finding the one (laughs) yeah yeah there was enough cats in there that i was like man if, if we could just get one going it would be good so i ran one that day um me and colby went in we had an 800 yard hike to a yeah I don't even, it was almost embarrassing to say, but like a, a burnt, it was in a, it was in a slash pile. <laughs> it's the most slick, it's like maybe a 30 foot. Slick like, tree. No branches. Yeah. yeah no it would branches. have been really cool if there would have been a links on the top of that thing standing <laughs> out. Like that would have been a really cool picture. That would have been epic. It was a slick tree, <laughs> slick tree. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there was like no branches. And we're like, yeah. so that's the one where you're like kicking dog's ass. And, and we, the track went out, we found where it went on a log or something. And yeah, it was on the side of a blowdown. Yeah. That was really tough. I, at least I know my dogs had a really tough time with it, with that. They get in that log pile slash and, you know, trying to find that track that's almost above their nose. Yeah. You know, when they get out on those logs and start walking through those log jams and everything, I'm sure if you did it enough, obviously if you do it enough and your dogs get used to it, they figure out, oh, we need to get up on top of these logs and find it. But for dogs that have never been in that type of country before, I think that was a real tough obstacle to get over. Yeah, there's some blowdowns that are just really impressive. Yeah, I think this was the first time they turned out on something that I saw just how tricky links are. Yeah, your you first know? one was just like, well, we had a couple bobbles, but... Yeah, but, but this uh, one, it was like they were tuned in. It's like, oh, these cats run circles, Yeah, you know? Yeah, you'd see them do some loops. And and there were some wolves up there somewhere that I didn't know. I'm, I'm really sensitive to the wolves. That's what I can tell you, compared to those guys that are around it a lot more. Yeah. And that's, I, I'm kind of to the point where I'm a little more used to it just cause we're, yeah. we're in them all the time. Also. I'm not. <laughs> okay. You know, there'll be a wolf track. If 
five miles away, just pointed that direction. I'm like, well, there's a wolf track five miles, you know, because they cover so much ground. So I was anxious when I was up there. And uh, anyways, we didn't catch that cat. And so um, the next day, so James, well, you had a day. And that, that night, like after that, we went ahead and finished the road. Yeah. Mark tracks because it wasn't going to snow again. Well, because James had a, a, a track that he couldn't, didn't catch. He had a, a just about jumped and the dog got messed up. And so they came out. So, so the, that day I said, Hey, we're going to ru- finish running this road out. We'll piss Mike off. <laughs> yeah. He was frustrated. <laughs> I'm like, this road is good. Like, if you don't want to go on it, I will hunt this road tomorrow. And I, I'm like, here's what we're going to do. We're going to, I want to run this road out for James because I want to get his dogs on the, another track because i think your dogs would catch one um and so anyways we run the road out find a couple more tracks that we we stomp out i think i did turn a dog loose on a couple of a couple on the way out just because like they weren't my dogs were spent they would they'd look at me and bark like do i really gotta go and i was like yeah it's not (laughs) you know if they would have screamed out of there i would let them keep going but um they weren't working hard enough and i was like i told Stuart, i said i'm gonna save my dogs for tomorrow morning because I'm not going to catch one tonight, and I'm just going to I'm just going to waste my dogs. So I said, let's just finish this road out. We'll stomp out the track so that when we come through with James, we have an idea what what's is fresh good. and what's not. So day five, last day, I tell Colby, to, don't don't tell your wife or whatever. But I'm like, the hunt was just getting good. I'm like, if we catch two cats by nine, we're, we'll we'll make it. But <laughs> I don't know how today's going to go. He was like, we got to get James a cat. Yeah, we got to get James a cat. Or at least we got to try. We got to yeah. have a good opportunity. Like uh, we, you know, We've got to get him on some. A good race. Like, yeah, good We want to see what his dogs will do. So we're running out of road. We send James up the road that we were on. <laughs> him and Mike are all pissed that there's tracks everywhere. Everywhere. You couldn't, I mean, it was. <laughs> just, just because there was cats everywhere, just James. a complete disaster. And so we get up there to a corner and there was a road that that nobody had ran out yet. And yeah. uh, I looked at Mike and I was like, you think we could drive that? And he, he goes, I think so. So we pulled down it and you know, it not being around there, not being from around there, usually the roads that no one's driven on yet, there's a reason why <laughs> you know someone why. hasn't <laughs> taken that road yet. And so, well, we had already spent dogs by that time. <laughs> yeah. So we were just riding the loop out. We didn't run some of those roads out. I get part way down it and I stop and I, I looked at Mike and I said, do you think there's a reason why Stuart doesn't run this road? And he goes, well, let's find out. <laughs> so <laughs> we take off down it and we go like maybe two, 300 yards. And I'm like, oh, there's Link's track right there. And so I get out and look at it and uh, it ended up walking down the road, I don't know, a few hundred yards and went back in the brush. And so we decided we'll run this road out to the end, make sure it doesn't come back out. And so we do that, come back. And I got a hold of buddy on the radio and said, hey, I got a track over here that I think it's fresh. It, I mean, it was hard to tell, um, and it was like three degrees outside. Yeah, so everything just had that hoar frost in it, and it was hard to really tell, you know, if it was made an hour ago or if it was made three days ago. And so anyhow, buddy comes over, and uh, we decide we're both going to turn some dogs in on it and and got it going there. Colby, narrate the the race from the race from, from a new point of view. <laughs> a new point of view. Well, you know, they went out there and they zigged and they zagged and they looped and they looped and they looped and they looped and they looped. And they looped. I'm stuck they, in a loop. They didn't do that first. <laughs> you're skipping to the. You're oh, am I not? Like that's, the, that's the part. They trailed out what? what 800 that? yards? Yeah, right? 800 yards before yeah. they jumped it. Yeah, they trailed out about 800 yards and they were kind of just stuck together like glue going through there. And once they got it jumped and started screaming out of there, I, I honestly thought, that, you know, a couple hundred yards were going to be caught. But, yeah, I mean the dogs are just <laughs> flying on this. Thing. They are hauling. I mean, tight. Everybody's together. They're making a loop. They make a figure eight, and yeah. and then they'd go out, and then they'd stop, and you'd see them all stop. And me and James are both like, up, oh, up. Oh, that's up. That that's got. That, I think it might We're caught right there. <laughs> yeah. And then all of a sudden, one would find it out of there, and I don't know how many times that happened that my heart was like, I think that's it. <laughs> no, it's not. I think that one's. No, it's not. I mean. <laughs> Yeah, and what they ended up. That was up, the theme. They ended up, by the time it was said and done, five miles. I did a, a, a start new hunt after we turned them loose, and it was like 4.9 to 5.2 miles is what those dogs. And they never were. left a third of a mile area. Yeah. I mean, it was just loop and loop and loop and loop. And Maybe loop. 900 yards is yeah. what they got away from us. Um, 
it was just super tight circles. All the dogs did really good. Um, it was the best Lynx race I have ever seen. Yeah. Like that cat did not want to get caught. No, absolutely mm-hmm. not. Um, I do believe it jumped out of a couple of trees. I, I don't yeah, know that, yeah. but I'm, we were close enough. So, we, so anyways, I don't know how many times it looped and circled across the road. We never seen it across the road, but you could watch on the track. Dogs did really good. We finally get the treed and, uh, we're like, oh, it's done right there. So we start going in. When, and you said you had Pearl wanting to leave. Yeah, so Pearl's wanting to trail out. And she got 235 yards out there. And she kind of holds up for a second. And she comes back. And she, she turned around and went back out again. And then decided, nope, all these dogs are down here. I better go look at this. Yeah, yeah. Mistake, Pearl. You should have <laughs> yeah. stuck with your instinct. We get down there. There's no cat in the tree. No. And... And walking down to that, as I saw the area we were going down into, I just had a feeling like it, it's one of those deals where I, I don't know if there's going to be a cat in this tree. Yeah. And, uh, I thought there was. I thought as many loops and as many times as they made circles and tight loops and, and ran back on its track. There, I, I mean. And looking back at it now, I, I do think that the cat was in that tree at one point in time. I don't know. I'm, I, maybe. It may have jumped back over it. I don't know. It looked like the perfect tree to see a cat in. Yeah. Um, so we proceed to tell the dogs there's no cat in that tree. Yeah. After a bunch of hollering and yelling around and walking loops. <laughs> I was and... going down there to make sure dogs got away from the tree because I kept wanting to go back to it. <laughs> and I trip and fall. And I'm like, everybody's <laughs> laughing at me because I'm like pissed off. I'm getting more pissed Looking off. Looking for the stick. <laughs> yeah. You're like, you got all this thick brush and you trip over it and, and oh man, all the dogs look at me like, oh crap. And then in the process of walking around through there looking for a track, I'd find a cell phone <laughs> just laying, in the, laying out in the snow, but he'd lost his phone and luckily I'd stumbled into that. That was the second time in the trip I lost my phone. Yeah. I lost it on the other, on day three. Four. No, day four, I yeah. lost my phone on a hike to, and it was, I don't know, I'm, I'm bad at losing stuff. <laughs> but so anyhow, they... They end up trailing back out. They they finally head right back out the direction. As we kick them off that tree, they start realizing it's not in there. So, actually, Andy, my little, my dog that I didn't want yeah. to keep, started piping up again. And then slowly one dog would go to her, and then the next dog, and the next dog. And pretty soon we had a race, go, uh, a cold trail going yeah, again. Yeah, a cold trail going. <laughs> we do it nice because we do it twice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right out on the track that Pearl had. Right. Yeah, so they, they left right out on the same track that Pearl had gone out and kind of double-checked herself and came back. And Yeah. I think some of that, I don't know, but I think when, you know, turning dogs. Mixing dogs. Mixing dogs. And I can't say that 100% because I've had it by just my dogs too, but I think they, there's times. When there's they that competitiveness there, like, and especially between like Mabel and Shy. Yeah. Like there's a, a competitiveness there, and I think it, it gets down to, they don't want to be last. Yeah, <laughs> who, who's want... going to find this thing first? Yeah, and they don't need much. That's a frustrating experience. And so, anyways, we're, I don't want to talk about that. It hurts my feelings. <laughs> <laughs> so the dogs start trailing out of there, and we're sitting down here. How far are we from the trucks at this point? I forget. Mm, three or 400 yards. Yeah, well, 400 maybe yards. we're getting closer. We're like 500, I think. Yeah, maybe 500 yards. So we're like, you're at that point where you're down there, and the dogs are just trailing directly away from the truck. You're no like, roads. <laughs> no roads. You're like 500 yards out. You're like, do I really want to go back to the truck or do I want to go with the dogs? I don't know where the dogs are going to go. And they're about 900 yards out. Yeah. And so they're just keep cruising, keep cruising. And so finally we're like, all right, Col- Colby probably wanted to go back to the I truck. I was thinking, I was like in a horse race. It's like, turn, turn, <laughs> turn. <laughs> <laughs> Me too, Colby. I was like, please turn and come back. Please come back. I don't there was know. like drama, and we were reaching a climax, and I was like, y'all need to turn this plot. <laughs> <laughs> so we decided, you know what, we might as well just keep going for the dogs. I don't know where we're going to end up, but um, hopefully we can be in the mess of them looping and whatever. And so, so they trail and trail, and so we start hiking towards them and uh, trying to, you know, they they do a little bit of turn up the creek. Not coming at us, but kind of like 90 and away mm-hmm. from us and so so anyways we're trying to cut them off you know what i mean we're like running in front of them hoping they keep coming that way um and then we can start hearing them and they're starting to get back on top of this cat again yeah and that's when it starts turning again and uh coming right for us 
Yeah. Yeah. We were like two, we got finally got about 200 yards and they start turning towards us. Yeah. Um, and, uh, I think it was going to start doing some loops again. It, it did one little loop. And, uh, but I think we started having dogs getting tired at this time. Cause when I'm looking at the race, they were starting to like string starting out just a little out. bit, you know, they weren't as tight together in a group as much. Mm-hmm. I think that played to our advantage. Cause I think that cat kind of turned a circle and <laughs> came every, in every as... direction it went. There was a dog. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It pretty much turned a circle. And it's like, Oh shit. I got, I got a dog on every side of me right now. This is maybe not the time to do a circle. Maybe a little bigger circle next time cat. <laughs> and, uh, anyways, it turns a circle and on that track, you can see everybody start to, you know, when, what I call the locate, you know what I mean? They start yeah. moving around. And then you start hearing them start locating in and, and everybody started locating really good. And, uh, I was like, okay, I think, I think we caught it right there. Legitimate. And so yeah. we start hiking, you know, listening to it. It sounded good. We were only 200 yards in. We start hiking in and then that's whenever we could hear it jump. I mean, you, you pretty much did jumped out of that tree. Yeah. I jumped out of that tree and. Cause it was a screaming race yeah. after that. I mean, mm-hmm. it was no. It, it was like, like you could hear them. They locked down treed. And it got kind of quiet, and it was almost like you could tell that cat was moving yeah. in the tree. And yeah, those dogs were sitting there just waiting, like yep. And then when it which jumped way out, is it gonna go? It was it was game on. They were, I think that turned them on when they watched when, when they, they watched when it come, they out. come out. And so, so it was. I mean, at that point, everybody kind of got a second gear and and uh, ended up catching it. We finally got it. Like uh, caught it eighty yards from us. We could hear everything going right good. Yeah, and uh, that was James's cat. Yeah, so. um what did it end up being? Uh, 20 pounds. 20 pound? Yeah. Yep. yep. And 20 so, pound female. So that was our second cat, and the uh, dogs were spent. I yeah. mean, great race. Really good. That was the best Lynx race I'd, I'd seen. I mean, how many times that thing, I don't even know how many times it made a loop. How many, th- how many do you think? Uh, I couldn't, I couldn't even tell you. It had to have been more fingers and toes than I have. Yeah. A 12, lot. <laughs> 12, 14, 15 loops. I don't know. It, you look back on the, on the GPS afterwards, and Looks it's like just circle, 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 spaghetti. circle. Spaghetti. Yeah. Yeah. Five miles. I mean, uh, honestly, five miles is what the dogs track and move on that race. And I started it after, you know, I started that. that About hunt. the time they were jumped. A little bit before that. So so there's probably 700 yards of, yeah. of the cold trail before the jump, which would be counted in that five miles, and then the rest of it would be a jump track. With a cold trail in the middle, you know, was, <laughs> we, we definitely let the cat, we gave the cat a, the Bench. dogs made a mistake. Um, and that was our, our, well, we found a couple more tracks on the way out that my dogs were just too tired to go. Yeah, so we, we didn't run ours. Uh, and we tried to, try to catch another one with, uh, Stewart's and, and, uh, we were just done. I think all our dogs were tired and, and then I looked at Colby and he had those eyes like he wanted to go see his. It was a good time. It was usually (laughs) when you get to that point, it's best to just call it good and not push it any further than you already have. Yep. And so we, about that time we cut ship and we all got our shit packed up and I think we're going to make your flight, Colby. Yeah, that's good. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, we didn't talk about weighing my cat. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. So, so on day four, we get back to the shop and so I, I do this. Get, you owe me a dollar still, Colby. <laughs> I'll memo you. Yeah. <laughs> Stuart does too. Yeah. So anyways, I, I always do this little game when we catch a cat is everybody puts a dollar in and you guess the weight. Yeah. And so Colby, what was your guess? 24. And and Stuart guessed 23. 23, yeah. And so I took 25 because cause I was kind of locked out. I probably would have been 24. I would have 23s. I would have guessed. Yeah. And uh, anyways, we weigh the cat. It comes in at 27. And I don't believe it. Yeah. I'm like, because we're on one of them little dial scales, you yeah. know what I mean, the bathroom scale. Because it's a big cat. But I'm like, like. And so anyway, Stuart's got some weights there, some of those selectable weights. Oh, yeah. And so I click out 25 and I wait, wait holding at that. And, you know, I see where, where it comes in. I'm like. That's all right. It's actually. 20. So I got 27 and a half. And I, I'm not going to tell you what the weight was of my fat ass on the <laughs> scale. But, <laughs> <laughs> let's just say my. When you when you factor out my ass, it was twenty seven, and I I could get the scale to hit the same mark, holding over a twenty seven pound weight, twenty seven and a half pound weight. Yeah, another this, guy did it too. Yeah, we had another yeah. guy do it too, and uh, legitimate twenty seven pound. Yeah, that was that's Huge. a really really nice cat. Oh, yeah, um, I'm kind of jealous. Yeah, that's, that's huge. So, cat of a lifetime. Yep. Yeah. 
now we got to get home. What do we miss? You, you got your. Oh, yeah, I got it. Uh, oh, the travel home. We had the deer situation. Oh. <laughs> so we're cruising I just missed through. This. <laughs> we're cruising through Williams Lake. Yeah. And me and Colby are just, you know, we're, I don't know, 50, 60, whatever. And we watch this white-tailed buck. Like, like at the point where you think you might hit him, screw it across the road. It's like a picture perfect. Like that, I don't know, like the John Deere logo. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's like, <laughs> and it's like, oh, did you see that? And it runs, and then the car coming oncoming just, bam, yeah. smacks it right <laughs> in front of us. I've never seen a deer get hit. It was loud too. You could hear it inside the truck. I feel bad for that car. That car got but messed the, up. But yeah. the those drivers in Canada, <laughs> that whole th- like it doesn't even surprise me because it was unreal. I mean, we got pushed off the road a couple times, two, three times by yeah. dump trucks or semis or whatever wanted to get by. You almost yeah. lost your mirror a couple times. Oh yeah, you. it was. Yeah, that, that was. Yeah, they are definitely. Lo- I didn't have any experience with logging trucks. Maybe because I pulled over this time for the fucking truck. I'm like, I'll wait like for you here. The most aggressive driving I've ever seen. Man, yeah. that one 18 wheeler that like pulled around you going uphill with yeah, the double pulled, lines. He was trying to pass two of us at once on at, double lines. On a double line <laughs> yeah. in the dark, in a curve, <laughs> and uh, going uphill. So he, he gets around the truck behind me, and I'm like, I'm just going to slow down and let this guy get around me. Well, I slow down. And that truck slows down, and he's going to try to squeeze in between us. And so then I instantly floor it, and I'm like, coming into a corner, this isn't real good. And I'm trying to get over on the shoulder, and he comes by me. But there was a point in time where we were both in the same lane. Yeah. By the time he made it around. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Aggressive driving. I mean, ice this morning, we had maybe five hours of just pure solid ice. Yeah, apparently so they don't believe in snow plows up there. <laughs> And find a hotel was so hard. Yeah, it was rough, really but we did it. We we yeah. came. Um, Colby got a cat, a really nice cat. James, you got a good cat. And uh, I didn't fill my tag, but I went into this not expecting to. I knew I was going to be the last guy to, yeah, to to shoot one. And uh, I'm okay with that. I could have just stayed a couple more days, and Colby would have sent you home with somebody else. But, yeah, but I figured, you know what? I mean, I don't have dogs. I'd have to heal some dogs up. They, they might go today. Um, they'd go tomorrow. They'd go tomorrow for sure. And the snow's going to get better. So bad conditions. Um, lynx hunting, man, it's, it's a different game. Like, Entirely. Uh, I don't know. There's a lot of guys, it's hard to explain, you know, everybody asks, well, what's it, what's it like? And it's like, you can have one race. It's really easy. You know, basically one little loop and it was up. And then the next race was like, holy hell. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> spinning and just a ton of dog pressure like the That's dogs what weren't the, going slow yeah the amount of pressure that those things take is unlike i mean any other it, bears lions bobcats you name it i've never seen an animal take that much dog pressure and not climb a tree yeah yeah yep and, and maybe not everyone does but it's impressive. when they decide yeah when they decide they're not going to climb a tree they just flat out aren't going to climb a tree mm-hmm. yeah it, it's 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 a neat it's a neat critter. I enjoy it. Um, Stuart Frazier, Itch your Mountain. I want to say thank you to him, man. He he put yeah. up a good. Yeah, I did. He's been uh, kind of yeah. A for anybody for a while. looking for a lynx hunt, that's Itch your Mountain Outfitters is is definitely a great place to go. Yeah, there you yeah. go. There's plenty of good ones out there. Um, like I said, we got a lot of customers that are guides and outfitters, so I'm not going to say he's the only one. There's plenty of good lynx hunters there, but uh, if you're looking for for a good one, definitely check out Itch Out and Outfitters with Stuart Frazier. And, you know, like I said, there's there's a ton of good ones out there. I'd recommend if you want to do it, do it. Like, definitely yeah. go bring your dogs and, and find one, you know, one of them guides out there that will let you take your dogs. You know, it's not, it's it's definitely worth it. I yeah. guess it depends on how much of a stress level you're looking for <laughs> on a hunt also. Yeah. Because it, yeah. it definitely would be a lot less stressful. If you just went with somebody else's dog, yes, and and yeah. just enjoyed it as a client there to shoot a cat, but <laughs> Did, where, where's the point, fun in that? What well, well, at what point were you thinking you were going home without your links? Friday morning. <laughs> <laughs> like this is not going to happen. I, I mean, I just I knew we just needed a track. Like we needed a runnable track that you know was going to be workable. But 
Yeah, there was a point in time there. It was like, well, I mean, even we during the race, I was like, I don't know if we're gonna catch. Yeah, this thing. I, I, at, when we got down there, yeah. I looked at Bunny. I'm like, I think we're screwed. Yeah, like I, I, I don't too. think. And about it was about that time that they figured it out and worked out of there. Yeah. But at that point in time, we were another twenty minutes behind it. And... It's, it's like getting kicked in the nuts a couple times. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's the best way I can describe it is like, oh, you got to you want to get kicked once in the nuts? Okay, you got to get kicked two or three more times before <laughs> you're going to catch this thing. Yeah, mm. they are. They are a very yeah. impressive animal. So, yeah. do you guys think your dogs are better for running length? Like, yeah. do you think if you go back to the things you typically? tree do you think you know i don't i don't know if it would be i don't necessarily think you're going to get see anything drastically different you know just doing it for a weekend i think if you continually hunted lynx all the time and you had docs that consistently caught lynx yeah Mm -hmm. yeah i was talking with mike so mike one of our guys was mike ramouche ramouche i can't and uh i was talking with him and he hasn't run bobcat before but i was like if your dogs can put this much pressure on a lynx to catch a lynx the way they do this, I'm like, you will catch bobcat. Yeah. You know, like there's the the problem they might have is getting a bobcat going. Where yeah. where you know at least where I'm from, if you don't have snow, you've got to strike that bobcat. You yeah. Know I mean? So that's the part that would be really difficult, I think, for some lynx hunters. You know, because if they really rely on snow to get the track started, um at least on the Oregon, Washington, you know, that, those, that coast, you know, yeah. some of the guys on that coast range that do a lot of striking, that's an advantage that, um, they would have a hard time with, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like to get a cat going without snow, um, it would be difficult, but if you could get a cat going the way those links spin and, and, you know, there's some bobcats that do that too, but not as many, not quite like that. And, uh, I, I think, you know, a good lynx hunter would, would definitely catch a, a bobcat mm-hmm. and and better damn sure catch a lion oh yeah 100 percent. you know if if it's you know the cold trailing part but you can cold trail a lion a long time a lot of conditions you know dirt air, you know i mean there's a bunch of conditions that you you know dictate that but on the jump there's, on the jump race yeah i don't I mean, think there's anything that runs that hard on a jump no you know and i don't have a ton of experience with bear but they're, I've ran a, a lot of bears, one. and I've I've still never seen anything quite like that. Yeah, they won't spin like that. It's mostly lining out. And, yeah, you know. So, Colby, anything final thoughts? Man, just a great trip. Cold. It's very. How do you like cold? The thing. You know, I think it's at one point James he was. So we're on our way out after your cat, right? And I'm. You're already gone. You're 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 pedaling the metal. You guys are BS and not even looking anymore because we're told we're like, hey, we're done. We're heading to camp. And I'm going through this one section where Stuart said there was this nice cat. And so I'm still in the back of my head. I'm like, I cannot give up until I hit the the haul road. You know, yeah. the, the haul road when there are, when there's semi trucks and, and log trucks, I'm like, okay, I'm I'm done. But I'm going through this section and sure enough, where where you know Stuart said the other day, he goes, Yeah, watch this area. There's there's been a nice cat that crosses here. And sure enough, there it is. I'm like, Oh <laughs> I just I don't even say anything. I just stop the truck, I get out, and Colby's <laughs> like in the truck, like, here we go. Okay. And he's sitting here. He told me, he goes, I didn't want to feel like a wiener buddy, but I was just getting myself prepared for the next hunt because I was so <laughs> cold. My feet were burning. And uh, I had some leaky boots. Oh. Yeah. No, I I was like, man, if we're going to do another race, I thought we were done. I was snacking and eating sandwiches. <laughs> he ate this whole sandwich. He's like, I wouldn't have ate that much. I wouldn't have eaten that if we were going to go out again. And yeah. then I was just sitting there just like, you know, I'm going to look lazy if I just sit here in the truck and <laughs> don't go look at this track and, and, you know, search it out. But at the same time, if I don't save my legs, I might not be able to do another race. He's like, like man, I was in there going like, oh, I wish I wouldn't eat that whole sandwich. Yeah. Oh, and I was like, cold. Buddy mm. calls on the radio and he's like, you guys had to have just drove right past this. I'm like, yeah, dude, I wasn't looking. Like, I, was, <laughs> I was almost intentionally not looking because it was like, we're getting out of here. Oh, yeah, that's my problem. I can't stop looking. I'm like driving. It's like, oh, there's just one more. Let's, let's just try that. I don't know. We Usually, though, when we do that, it works. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think we would have better, you know. If we wouldn't have spent our dogs, I mean, I, pretty much I looked at my dogs and they're like, shut the box, yeah. <laughs> shut the door. I don't, I don't want to go. I don't care. Give me till tomorrow and I'll go. They might've tried to muster something up, but they wouldn't have given after that race. I just, I like my dogs enough that I'm yeah. like, you know what? I'm not going to make them 
I'm not going to take everything from them. They they work really hard for me. And so when they give that, I mean, it had a blown, you know, Shelby's got a little bit of a blown pad. You know, they're... Mabel had a tore up face. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There was, there was just a lot those dogs gave. They had to give every ounce of energy to push that last little bit on that cat. Because that cat was not going to climb. I mean... It was it would jump out of a tree. It would not stay there, and so when those dogs, you know, it it just had the advantage of the dogs every time. Because you think about it, when a cat jumps up in a tree and rests, and the dogs are still treeing. Yeah, they're still working their ass off. So down below. then that cat jumps out, and it's like, okay, I got my new win, and now the dogs are like they've been treeing. So they're, you know what I mean? Like to give that much more, and to hold it, you know, to 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 catch it and start making it climb a tree when yeah. it doesn't want to climb a tree. Is just intense pressure. I mean, it's just, it, I don't know. I, it just amazes me how, you know, when you see that tight of a race, that hard of a jump, and, and the dogs have to just go that extra mile, um, that, that's pretty, uh, pretty impressive to me. And yeah. that's when I'm like, you know what? Like I told Stuart, I said, I'm not running my dogs. You know what I mean? Like they gave me 150% on that track that I don't need to catch a cat that bad. If I really want to catch a cat, I'll wait a day, I'll wait two days let them take a break and then I'll go hunt again. But yeah, I opened the dog box door and neither, they just didn't even get out. They just <laughs> sat there and like peeked their head out the way. Like, anybody got any treats out there? Is there some food? Cause if not, I ain't moving. <laughs> yeah. You get some whiskey. I mean, there's gotta be something in this for me. Cause we just worked our ass off and you just, you know, pet, gave me a pet and I, mean, I gave him some treats at the truck. We gave him some, I, I pretty much gave him all my treats. So anyways, Lynx hunting. That was a fun trip. Thank you, guys. Colby, thanks yeah. for making it out here. Yeah, thanks for inviting me. You got your, your a, first cat of your cat slam. Yeah, you know, it's going to be a memory that's all, that always sticks with me, you know. Yeah. Oh. And then uh, James. I'm that finished my cat slam. That's your cat slam. You finally yeah. got done. I didn't shoot a cat, but I had a blast and uh, was able to be a part of both of your guys' first link, so that's always cool. Yeah, it was yeah. a lot of fun. Anything else before we go? We got to get out of here so Colby can make his flight to his beautiful, newlywed wife. True story. I thought you were going to cry. Until the time. <laughs> I turned away. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks.